Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the dangers of baking soda. The first thing I want to say is that I do realize that a lot of people get relief when they take baking soda. It gives them great help with their acid reflux. So I'm not denying that, but I want to say it comes with a package. So just hear me out, okay? So the first thing I want to talk about is the function of the stomach. The stomach helps you digest proteins helps you absorb minerals and kill pathogens, microbes, unfriendly microbes. It's designed to produce and make acid. The acidity level of the stomach normally should be between one and three. Now, what does that mean? If we look at the pH scale right here, we have seven being neutral, okay? And anything that goes down from that is more acid. Anything that goes up is more alkaline. Now the thing you need to know is that a pH of 6 going to a pH of 5 is 10 times more acid. 6 is 10 times more alkaline than 5 and 5 is 10 times more acid than 6. So these are compounded. Okay, It's not just by 1. So a pH between 1 and 3 is extremely acid. So the stomach normally should be extremely acid. Baking soda is nine. That's pretty alkaline. So the big question is why would someone get acid reflux in the first place? Well, it happens when you lose your stomach acids. When your stomach acid starts going to a four or a five, what happens is the valve up here does not close correctly. It opens up. Okay, that's called GERD. And acid will kind of uh, reflux up this way. Um, I used to do a test where you would swallow this capsule with string and it would go down to your stomach. We'd have you lay on your right side for about 15 minutes and then we'd pull up the str string and measure your pH. And many, many people had a pH that was between four and five, sometimes six. And these are the people that had acid reflux, okay? Which is counterintuitive. You would think acid reflux is a person that has too much acid. No, it actually, they, they don't have strong enough acid and this valve opens up. That's really what happens. Now, I'm not talking about ulcers or gastritis. I'm just talking about acid reflux, okay? Number two, we have the pancreas down here that normally should release uh, certain bicarbonates because baking soda is called sodium bicarbonate. Well, the pancreas also makes bicarbonates to alkalize the acid coming down into the small intestine. We don't want this strong acid going down to the small intestine, so the pancreas helps to buffer or neutralize that acid. Now, the small intestine normally should be alkaline, okay? But these bicarbonates were never designed to go back up into the stomach. The stomach needs to be acidic to be healthy. So when you take baking soda, you are gonna feel better temporarily, but you're only patching things up. Okay, it's going to eventually get worse. Why? Because you're taking the acid out of the situation. You're not adding the acid back in. What you should be doing is adding something called apple cider vinegar to help you. It's very effective. Um, you can also take something called betaine hydrochloride to help build up the acid. Uh, that will help correct acid reflux way more than baking soda will and definitely long term. So again, the question you need to ask is what is causing the acid reflux in the first place versus just treating the symptom and not really knowing what's going on. Here's some side effects from taking baking soda long term. And I'm not talking about occasionally, that's totally fine. If you wanna take it here and there, that's fine. Just don't make a habit of it. But it can alkalize your stomach and create a lot of problems with protein digestion, mineral absorption, and the inability to kill pathogens, which, which then can go down into your digestive system and create other problems. Also, the, one of the side effects is a depletion of your potassium reserve. Well, there's a whole bunch of symptoms with that, high pulse rate, uh, muscle cramps, weakness, fatigue, things like that. Uh, decreased chlorides, you need chloride to build hydrochloric acid. So without the chlorides, we create a, another problem. Higher levels of sodium. So we need all these minerals in the correct ratios. And if you wanted to use baking soda for in your toothpaste or let's say uh, a bug bite or poison ivy, that's totally fine topically. But if you're gonna take it orally, just make sure it's short term and it's not over a long period of time. Get to the root cause. 
Thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.